Good day, fish tankers. Has someone ever talked to you and said, I love to keep a fish tank or an aquarium, but it's just so expensive to replace the fish every month because they live for such a short time, they're dying all the time, you have to buy new ones. When that person's got a problem, they've got to know, go and learn to do it again because fish aren't supposed to be like that. Now, this is the only footage I've got of this kissing garami that I had years ago, and it lived to be 15 years old. Now, thank you to Grace Bromfield who gave me an idea to talk a bit about how long do fish live and what factors are there that affect their longevity. So if that's a topic that you're interested in, finding out how long fish live and how we can maximize their lifespan, the things we can do to give them a long and happy life, then stick around. Now here's my dachshund Lulu. Lulu is going to be 14 years old in a, a slightly more than a week and she's the best looking 14 year old dachshund that you ever saw. And the interesting thing about dogs, the little dogs go much, get much older than the big dogs. And that's like the opposite of the rest of the animal kingdom because an elephant gets much older than a mouse. In the rest of the animal kingdom, the big fellows get older than the little ones. So it's the same with fish, this big Oscar can live 10 to 20 years. So it's a real wet pet and it's a longer term commitment that you have with some of these fish. Because 20 years can be a long time in your life. So consider that when you decide what fish to get. Likewise with the puffer fish, the spotted puffer can also uh, live between 10 and 20 years. And it depends on many things, how good a home you provide them. And the clown loach, for instance, grows very, very slowly. They do get big, but they can live also for 10 to 20 years. This Paul Garami, probably going to match my kissing Garami. Hopefully it will for, for 10 to 15 years. And that'll be interesting to see how old this fellow gets. But you get the point. The older fish grow older. Then we have other fish, like goldfish. They are some of the oldest fish in the hobby. They can live between 10 to 15 years. And that is quite a long time. And the oldest goldfish recorded was a 43-year-old goldfish named Tish. So there's been an official record of a 43-year-old goldfish. And then you can see the goldfish here, if I kept properly, like in this big outdoor pond or in a very large aquarium, these with a the tilapia are probably going to grow old. The koi can live for 25 to 50 years. They are some of the longest living fish. There's been reports of 100-year-olds, 200-year-olds, not scientifically verified, but there's been a record of a 226 year old koi, believe it or not, they can really go old. Here is my Colombian redfin tetra taken about a year ago, he was five years old there. You can expect about five, six years, maybe even seven years out of these bigger tetras, but the live bearers like these guppies, they're gonna go for two, three years max, and there's certain factors that will also affect how old they get. Same year with the platys, you can expect about two to three years out of these little fellows. And then these small tetras like the cardinals, also two to three years is about the maximum they get. Same with a little killifish, also two to three years. Now, what factors are they affecting how old our fish get? And let's look at the factors firstly that we can control in order to give them a maximum lifespan. Firstly, you are what you eat. Now, same year with us, rubbish in, rubbish out. Quality food makes a big, big difference in your fish's overall health and also how long they end up living. Now, for our dogs, like Lulu here, she only gets the premium vet food. And sometimes I think we must think about our fish in the same way. There you go, Lulu. Uh, that ear needs to be returned to factory setting. Just, just hang on. Back to fat factory setting. There we go. Now, I tend to feed my fish the, the food with the best ingredients and invariably that's a more expensive food. So buy your fish the best food you can afford. I'm trying out Denelay now, that works well. I also use a lot of ocean nutrition. I like the frozen food of ocean nutrition. And I also use some ocean nutrition flakes sometimes for one of my other tanks. But you get the point. I'd rather get one of the major brands. Variety is good, but rather have fewer kinds of food of food that you feed that's of a better quality than having a variety of all kinds of rubbish. Stay away from the food that you buy in the convenience store. That's got lots of fillers and they're mostly not good food. 
Now also fo feed food that's appropriate to the fish that you have. Of course fish have different dietary requirements. For instance this Oscar you're going to feed a protein pellet, a, car a carnivore pellet and for this Pleco he's going to get some blonde baby marrow and some sinking algae wafers even though they want a bit of protein food as well but some fish like this Pleco and, and maybe Mambuna, Malawi cichlids they want vegetable based food so feed them good quality food and feed them the right food. Then you have to maintain good water quality. So stay on top of your water changes as it is necessary. Make sure your biological filter is serviced and is active. You always want zero ammonia and zero nitrite. And as far as nitrites go, the only way you can dial it in is by testing and then you'll know what your batting average is. But I would not let nitrites go above 40 ppm. I try to keep it below 25 ppm. I find that's much better for the long-term health of the fish. Over time, high nitrates are, is not a good thing. Then keep the right fish in the right water because these peacock uh, African cichlids will want hard alkaline water and this ram will want soft acidic water. So keep them in the right water. And then temperature is also important. If you keep some fish like these guppies on the upper range of air temperature, like mine was in 26 degrees Celsius because I can't get my water cooler than that in the summer, then they're much more active, they breed a lot more but they also live shorter, they have shorter lifespans. Tank size, make sure that they're in an appropriately sized tank, as big as possible, a stunted fish will have a shorter life. Then limit stress. Now some fish, like these pencil fish displaying to each other, that display among males is sporadic and is normal, but continuous aggression, where one fish is bullying the other one and chasing him into a corner like what is happening here with this apisto, You'll see there's a one bear at the bottom of a tank when the camera shifts as bullying those and pushing them into a corner. That's not a good situation. You need to separate these fish. So prevent the bullying, minimize the stress on the fish. Well, those are the things that we can control. What are the factors outside of our control that can affect how old our fish get? Well, the first thing is line breeding. Now, the more colorful, the more exotic, the bigger the finish, the more they've been line bred to achieve these shapes and colors and the shorter their lifespan is likely to be. Better fish, I used to keep them for three years and sometimes even a bit more. These days I struggle to get them past a year or two. And the flower horn like you see here has been line bred for those colors and the shape of its nuchal hump. And it's likely to have a shorter lifespan, say for instance, than an Oscar that's much closer to a wilder form. Same with these guppies that's been line bred to have these big tails and colors. And also keep in mind, if you buy a guppy and it's already got the big tail like that, keep in mind the age you're buying a fish at. Because if you're buying them there, the whole, half of their lifespan is likely already gone. So if I buy guppies like these, I can probably only expect them to live about a year and a half. That's about what I'm going to get out of them. Maybe I'm lucky I can push it to two if they are in slightly cooler water. But that is it. So uh, your, the age you buy them at and the more exotic they are, the, the shorter they're going to live. For example, these fancy goldfish with their round bodies, they're still going to be a long-lived fish. I've had mine and I've got them up to about eight years or so, but I couldn't get them to live uh, the, the 10 or 15 years that these normal shaped goldfish, like these comets and common goldfish normally live for. They are slightly shorter lived, even though they're still long lived, the round fancy goldfish. Well, fish grow old. And here you see my Colombian redfin tetra. You can see the back has got that hump. Here is a female guppy that I had in the past. You can see it's got that hump on the back. That shows you that it is an old fish. So they become a bit haggard looking, but give them a tank that's sort of gentle, with not boisterous tank mates. This better you can see also has sort of a hump on its back got a bit of swim bladder trouble but it, it copes well by, by, by resting in the, in, in the plants there in the upper end of the aquarium and it's feeding and living normally so it's fine just be gentle on it in its old age. Well that's it from me. Please let me know in the comment section which was the oldest fish, what, what fish have you had that grew the oldest? What was the maximum lifespan of a fish that you've kept in the past? And until we see each other again Please remember to subscribe and take good care of those domestic denizens of the deep.
Thank you.